Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. Today's video, we are going to be transforming my face into that, that, that. I don't know how it's going to come out yet, but you do. I think it's going to be a fun video today. We're going to be trying out the Purito Sika Clearing BB Cream. I've got the Ritual de Fee, de Fill? It's Fee. Color Nectar Pigment Balm. The Pony, no, this doesn't say pony at all. <laughs> MQNY waterproof pen eyeliner. Where did I come up with pony? Where did I come up with that? And then some real techniques brushes, Joa mascara. I think it's gonna be a fun try on today. I feel like I have something in my eye. Oh, I do. Contact lenses. I feel like such a jerk. So there was this box that popped up in my email from YesStyle, and it was supposed to be some kind of a, a value box. So I, of course, was like, oh, I'll try that. I don't know if it's going to be any good. I didn't recognize a lot of the brands like this. This is Unle Unleashia, the Get Jewel palette. So I thought in my head, okay, YesStyle's been really good about shipping, so I'll just wait till it gets here, and if it turns out to be a nice box, I'll post it to my Instagram so other people can grab it. No, this thing sold out. It sold out so fast. I'm gonna do a really simple look today, so I'm just gonna grab this peachy shade, which has a name. It is Hooked. This is such a great brush for just a more simple eyeshadow. I don't ever talk about brushes, so I'm gonna do it right now. This is the Sigma Medium Angled Shading E70. It helps you to, well, ideally, to place your eyeshadow really well and then blend it at the same time. Just really nice and quick if you're not doing, you know, some kind of a, a very complicated eye look, which I guess those are no longer in style. Remember when cut creases were everywhere? What were you doing with your life if you didn't have a cut crease on? I'm personally kind of glad that that phase is over, even though I will absolutely never judge somebody for doing a cut crease. That seems really strange, you know, let people do whatever they want to with their makeup. But I'm kind of glad that we're back to a little bit more simple looks just because that stuff was so time consuming. I'm not kidding when I say it used to take about three hours to do some of those really complicated makeup looks. The only thing I wished about this little palette, have I told you which one this is? This is number two, Starry Dot. I wish that the two mattes in here were a little bit different in depth. They're really quite close in the depth themselves, so you kind of end up doing a look with a matte and a shimmer. That's okay, it's just going to be a quick little look anyway. So I'm going into the shimmer shade Dazed. Have I told you all this is not my first time using anything in this video? I don't really like doing first impressions. So something I'm noticing immediately today is that the last time I used this, I did use my finger instead of a brush and that did definitely give me a lot more color payoff. So I might do that again. We'll see what happens. We, oh yeah. Yeah. Look at how much more color I'm getting with doing that. The only thing I don't love about uh, just using your finger alone is it's a little harder to get good placement. I'm, I'm sure you all know this. I'm very confused by this glitter shade in here. I know a lot of people aren't into glitter these days, but the main thing that has me confused is I can't tell if it's eye safe. I'm kind of really doubting it is because I certainly see those giant glitter flecks in here. But it doesn't say on the packaging anything, anything about that whatsoever. I'm going to err on the side of caution and just skip it. Maybe we could... Maybe we could do some of it as highlight, something like that in place. But yeah, I think it's better safe than sorry when it comes to glitter. So I'm going to move on to this, the McQueen New York Waterproof Pin Eyeliner. I have been loving this. I don't know if you ever open my description box and look at the products I've been using, but this is actually wonderful. I've been using it a lot. It's a felt tip, but it comes to such a fine point. This is actually one of those products that was gifted to me in my YesStyle order. Are any of you signed up as uh, a YesStyle influencer? If not, you should. If not, you absolutely should sign up for that. If you have um, an Instagram or YouTube, I don't know about TikTok. I'm not on. I'm not on TikTok. Anyway, this video is not about TikTok. Yes, you should absolutely sign up. I'll have some kind of a uh, referral for you if you're interested. So since I didn't do any kind of outer corner work here, we're just going to do a little bit of a wing today. I bought some of the Soft Glam brushes by Real Techniques. This is 034 Primer Brush for Cream and Gel Primer. We are going to do some priming today. 
Unique concave shape fits around the contours of the face to evenly sweep primers across the face. It is a really pretty brush. Designed to be Instagrammable. Mmm. Oh, nice. It actually fits really well around the nose, which is where I definitely want to make sure I prime. My skin is kind of really irritated. I, I'll, we'll talk about possible reasons why uh, when we get into the next product. But yeah, my skin is uh, its not looking great. It's not looking terrible, but it's not looking great either. Right up around the brows. That is beautiful. Oh, I love this brush. This is, a, this is actually a first impression, let me be clear. But yeah, I do see what they were going for with the shape of it. Okay, let's chat about this Purito Sika Clearing BB Cream SPF 38 PA++. We've got to chat about this because I was misinformed about this and uh, I think a lot of other people are too. So I've seen people say that this is a mineral BB cream. That is because the second ingredient is titanium dioxide. However, the third ingredient is ethyl hexyl methoxy cinnamate, which I do believe is octanoxate, which is A-OK -okay for my skin, but still a chemical filter. And then if you go down a little further, you see some silicones, that's fine, butylene glycol, ethyl hexyl salicylate, which I believe is octasalate. If I'm wrong, I'll correct myself on the screen. I'm not a an expert in chemical filters, but I know that those are chemical filters, so it's a bit nerve-wracking for me because while I know I can use uh, octanoxate, I don't know about that other one. That could even be why my skin is a little blotchy. Uh, let me tell you about the brush I'm using real quickly. Soft Glam 027 Complexion for Liquid and Cream Foundation. This is a stippling brush. So I have been trying this out. We're just gonna put this here since my hand is still <laughs> glittery. Uh, do you wanna talk about allergies real briefly, actually? We can have a conversation about allergies on this fine, lovely day. I think that allergies is just such a tricky topic that intersects with skincare and with makeup, and it often leads people to just being really confused. I say this because, as you know, I'm testing Glow Recipe at the moment. Well, there's certainly a potential with allergies with using the brand Glow Recipe because they do have a lot of plant extracts, they have a lot of fragrance in their products. And the thing about allergies is that allergic reactions are not a, a uniform across the board. Everybody has this exact same reaction. There's more latent kinds of allergic reaction where your skin is just irritated enough, just inflamed enough that it invokes the breakout cycle. So if you're somebody who is prone to acne, you may not immediately notice anything, but then you may start breaking out, you know, a week or two later and you, you don't know, you don't know how to trace that breakout back to something that happened almost two weeks ago. So I'm saying all this because I was looking at the reviews for, uh, I, I don't remember which product, but it was one of them where it's, which had a decent amount, no, it was the banana, the banana moisturizer. It had a lot of negative reviews. I saw people even saying, you know, is everybody who is rating this five stars just lying because this destroyed my skin? Well, no, it's not that they're lying. It's most likely that you have some kind of an allergy to something in that formula, which means there's absolutely no way that you're going to have good results with that product. I've been reading about allergies for, ye for oh, over a year at this point, and I think what's so fascinating about them is that it just kind of feels like the... Uh, the teams of scientists doing this work don't really even know what's going on with allergies themselves because it's such a it's such a complex topic. Uh, for example, there's research going on with desensitization, which is really quite awesome. But the reason I didn't talk more about this in my video on Monday is because I realized just how much more m massive of a topic this is. I didn't want to say like, oh yeah, use some uh, algae in your products and you might have your allergies go away. It's not, it's not quite that simple, but at the same time we are making some breakthroughs and helping people to manage their allergies. Uh, also, I bought shade 21, by the way. I had no idea what I was doing, and it kind of... I'm not sure this is looking too appropriate at the moment, actually. <laughs> it does have that gray titanium dioxide cast to it, though, doesn't it? Oh my. We'll bring in some concealer and, and fix this up a bit. Ooh, I am really pleased with these brushes, though. They're so nice. I hope I can get this nice and clean, but yeah, really nice stippling brush. 
Ulta Beauty Youthful Glow Concealer. Time to lighten this up just a little bit. So, you know, the other important part with allergies is uh, I really don't ever want to make it seem like they're more common than they are. The reality is the amount of people who will have allergic reactions is going to be pretty low. Although what does make this tricky is that more dermatologists have been reporting higher incidence of allergies and Panels of doctors and scientists don't actually know why or what is contributing to this. Which I think is why some amount of people do say, you know, well, absolutely no fragrance and skincare products then, because that can contribute to allergies and possibly some people suspect that this could increase the possibility of developing allergies later. And that is interesting given that doctors and dermatologists are saying they're seeing this higher rate of allergies. But the problem I have with making this solely about fragrance is that it's definitely not just about fragrance. It's about so many more things. It's about chemical filters and sunscreens. It's about nickel contact. It's about plant ingredients. So possibly rather than just being as simple as being about fragrance, maybe it's about just using skin care and using makeup as a whole, which more people are doing with lots more products, right? So rather than leave you with this idea of, oh no, should we just stop using stuff on our faces? No, instead I think what's exciting is that there is a lot of research, oh the Patrick Ta cream contour, uh, there is a lot of research going on in this right now. There are a lot of people trying to, scientists and doctors, trying to figure out what's going on, what can we do about it, how can we help people to not have these higher rates of allergies. So I'd say I'm actually pretty hopeful, even though, you know, obviously it's frustrating to be somebody who does deal with allergies. I'm still going to say overall, I, I'm hopeful. I think we'll, I do think we'll have some kind of breakthroughs. I think that uh, more truly hypoallergenic products may be in the future for us. And of course, hopefully people have a better understanding of what allergies looks like, what allergies feels like, you know, things like your skin itching, stinging, those are signs of allergies as opposed to just, you know, a product being bad. If you're experiencing that, it's probably not just you, but it doesn't mean that it's everybody, right? Does that make sense? See, I'm out here feeling really bad that I have to say chemical filters kind of don't typically work out that well for me because I know, I know about clean beauty and how they're trying to say chemical filters cause a lot of things that we don't have any, uh, you know, documentation for. Meanwhile, I'm just like, yeah, but it stings my skin and that's enough for me to not want to use it. Let's move on. I'm going to use the Real Techniques Filtered Cheek Blush today. I thought this looked like such a perfect brush for cream blushes. And then also the Ritual de Vie Color Nectar Pigment Balm. I bought the shade Blood Flower. Oh, I'm so excited about this. You all got me so hyped up for this product. Oh, it's tiny. It is quite tiny. That's okay. I don't mind a small. Oh my goodness. It's so red. But it said it applies sheer, and I think, I think it will. Let's see. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I might have applied too much. Oh, oh, oh. Fix, fix it with a sponge. Fix it with, the, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. Oh my goodness, look how na- Oh, I see, I see. Oh, this has a smell to it though. I just did my brows off camera, don't worry about it, you're not missing anything. Look at, look at this. This is this. That is this. Remarkable. Let us finish some bronzing here. I've grabbed my Spectrum A05. I don't even know if they make this anymore. But see, I don't like the big, the big bronzing brushes. I just don't think it looks good on me to go overboard with the bronzer. So I wanted to make sure I was really clear about something since I just hyped up this Patrick Ta bronzer. What I like about this is how uh, you almost see nothing, right? Honestly, it's not that different from the Ritual Defeat, really. It's just a barely there bronzer and that looks better, I feel, on me than to do a lot of bronzing. But I just want to say, you know, this could obviously be too little for some people. So one of you had left a comment that you returned this, Amanda, I believe. Uh, and I wanted to make sure I reiterate that comment because I think it's important. She said she was using the cream contour in here under foundation and didn't have enough of an effect. So if that's something you do, you may not want to purchase this. Whereas if you do what I do, you put it on top of your foundation and you like a really light amount of bronzer, then it may be for you. 
It's all that personal preference stuff all over again. You have to know not only if other people think a product is good or not, you have to know what it is that you want in a product and you know, does it reflect on the person reviewing it? Do you want the same thing or do you want something completely different? All right, it is time to do, oh, I forgot to do highlighter. I keep forgetting highlighter lately. Should we do the glitter? Glitter looks atrocious on camera. Let me do the mascara first because I feel like it's got to be a little strange that I do eyeliner, then the rest of my face, then I come back for mascara. But you know, again, it's what works for me. You got to do whatever works for you. Ooh, almost stabbed myself in the eyeball. That does not work for me. I do not like the feeling of stabbing myself in the eyeball. Check this wand out that I'm using. This is not a, not a mascara. I saved the wand from a sleek mascara. I don't think they make it anymore, but... The formula wasn't great, the wand was, so I thought, let's save it, and yup, absolutely love it. I'll get everything brushed through exactly where I want my lashes so I don't have any clumps. Oh, wondrous. So this is called the Joa Lash Uprising Volumizing and Lengthening Mascara. It's got that hourglass brush, so you know it is made for more volumizing than anything else. Well, typically that's what that means. Okay, so I have to say it's not the most volumizing, but you know where it's really strong is it does last all day. It didn't flake on me at all. It didn't smudge on me, but it was hard to remove. Yes, I repackaged this for the camera. Actually, it was slightly unsettling how easy it was to repackage this. Making me uneasy, y'all. Making me uneasy. I don't know about buying makeup in stores these days. You never know what people try on the shelves. Anyway, but yeah, that aside, I actually, I do like it. We're gonna go into this glitter shade and do some glitter on my cheeks. I might regret this. I'm telling you in advance, glitter does not look good on camera. I know I'm applying a pure glitter to my cheeks and yet for some reason I'm surprised that it's glittery. What? <laughs> I tried to watch that show Euphoria that a lot of people were taking makeup inspiration from. I can't do it. I cannot get into that show. I don't get it at all. It is so bizarre to me. Who went to parties? Who went to parties in high school? Was I that uncool? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. I put the wig on first because I had to decide on a lip color. I think we're gonna go a little bold today, but really quickly let me tell you about the wig. So part of why I buy wigs is to get away from my very fine hair. So I have mixed feelings about how fine this particular wig is. It is very very fine. It's very soft, but very fine. So you do have to deal with a lot of the same issues that me with my fine hair deals with on a daily basis, which is a lot of frizziness, a lot of uh, difficulty finding little hair pieces. Sometimes it's in your eye and you can't see it, but you can feel it. Stuff like that. That is a reality of fine hair. So yeah, it's just a little frizzier. I actually do prefer the quality on my uh, little purplish one, purplish gray wig. I'll link them both below. If you're interested, I'll also have my uh, Yes Style rewards code in the description box below. But yeah, this one is actually, it's a different quality and I'm not so, not so sure about it. I do love the color though. And you know, it can be styled. It's just one of those wigs that it would be kind of difficult to really wear this out because of that. Oh, I'm flashing the mirror in my own face. Let me put that down for a second. So yeah, you know, this is something where the wind blowing on this might not be a very fun experience, but for photos, Perfect. A bold lip color. We'll try out this Revlon Color Stay Satin Ink. I think I've seen a lot of people really uh, hyping this up. So this is the shade 015 Fire and Ice. Hopefully it goes with the wig and gives me the end look that I want. My problem today is I don't have a good lip liner for this, so I'm probably going to try to diffuse the edges, I think. I don't know if I have enough skill to pull that off, y'all. Well, you know, it's just makeup and it washes off, so we got that going for us. I feel like we can all agree, needed more sunflowers. Well, that's it for today's haul haul try on. It kind of was a Yes Style haul, drugstore haul, my Sephora VIB sale haul. It was a, it kind of was a haul, actually. Oh, by the way, the rest of my Yes Style haul is coming this Saturday. I'm trying my hardest to give you all as many videos now as I can because I'm supposed to be going back to work in the very near future, supposedly. I'm not entirely sure yet. So yes, what's new in skincare on Friday and then on Saturday, a Korean skincare haul. And that's all we have for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you had a lot of fun watching this video. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you all next time.